got sucked all good. Now he's mad. I feel like there should be interjections here. Like someone, like someone yelling and screaming? Yeah. Something like oh, that. Oh, drum beats, uh, bass line, so. Yeah. And we're back. There Ooh. we go. Perfect time to die it Perfect out. Perfect time. Spare everybody. To spare everybody. Howdy, folks. Welcome back to another episode of TFL Now Live. Uh, you might Except notice. We're not doing TFL Now Live, are well, we, Mike? It's which truck or car or truck should I buy? Uh, and you'll notice that I am not Andre. Boy, have we noticed. <laughs> um, uh, I could try and talk in a Russian accent, no, 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 but then don't. no one could understand me. Uh, and I'm filling in for Andre because he has taken the day off to go skiing with his family. So yeah. you're stuck with me. Sorry. <laughs> we'll get over it. Folks, uh, <laughs> we've already been looking at your comments on screen. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys very much for... We're going to do this thing exactly. for our friend uh, Gustavo Pino, who sent us seven Canadian dollars before the show even started. So thank you very much. We really appreciate much. that. That's awesome. Uh, what do they get if they actually send us some dough? So uh, if you send us five bucks or more, your name will show up on our hood. Welcome to the hood, as we like to call it. Uh, Ten bucks, you get yourself a TFL truck bumper sticker. Twenty-five dollars, and you'll find yourself either your choice of a TFL truck or a TFL car patch, much like the ones we have on our very own jackets. And then fifty bucks, of course, a hat uh, signed by the team or not. It's up to you. It's entirely up to you. If you do send us some uh, moolah, please send an email to info at tflcar.com with your address so we can send you our thanks back your way. Uh, and, of course, this is the show called What Car or Truck Should I Buy, where we answer the questions that you guys send us asking what car or truck you should buy. It's pretty straightforward, huh? It is, and judging by some of your comments already, you guys saw the title screen. And the question is, at least with number uh, question number one, whether you should buy a power wagon I love the truck. Or if you get a tradesman with a power wagon package. So we're going to discuss that in just one minute. Don't be afraid to put your comments on the screen. Heck we're yeah. going to be looking at these comments. But most likely we're going to be answering a majority of them by the end of the broadcast. So if we missed you, put it up again yep. so we know. All right. Yeah, we, we have our pre-selected questions that we're going to try and work our way through. But we also want you guys to interact with the live chat because uh, it's fun, right? By the way, if you haven't noticed... Oh, yeah. What does that say, Nathan? Power Wagon No Care! <laughs> Power Wagon No Care! Um, this is actually some of the merchandise we have, regular merchandise. So um, I had that design just for you, Nathan. Yeah, Mike is one of the guys responsible for designing I, it. I, I helped make that shirt. I didn't do the design myself because I'm not that talented, but... I was going to give you credit when you didn't need it. Okay. Yeah. Let's... Um, <laughs> okay, let's... First question, uh, it's a truck question. Justin, our friend, asks, I am in the market for a Ram Power Wagon. Uh, in my search, I've come across numerous tradesmen with the Power Wagon package. Uh, from my research, they seem to be the same except for a few cosmetic bells and whistles on the Power Wagon. The price difference is around $9,000. My question is, do you know if there are any major mechanical or functional differences between the Power Wagon and the Power Wagon package? No, there are no major changes. You still get the 410 axles front and rear, you still get the winch, you still get the disconnecting front sway bar. You get all of those components. You even get the same tire and wheel package, but the big changes are with the interior. If you don't mind a plain chain interior, then the tradesman may be right up your alley and you're gonna save a ton of dough. Also, there are some cosmetic things, including the grills, the bumpers, and graphics and what have you on the vehicle itself. Really, the tradesman power wagon package is for people who like to be dominant and badass off-road without looking it, whereas in the regular power wagon is dominant and badass while looking it. Exactly, yeah. Specifically, the cosmetic changes that are different on the outside, So. The Power Wagon, of course, gets the uh, the lights up on the top. You get the Power Wagon graphics package. You get the Ram Rebel grill instead of the crosshair grill. It's a similar grill. If you get the Power Wagon package instead of the actual Power Wagon, it's a crosshair grill. This is like the Ram Rebel. Catfish, um, we call it. The catfish, the mustache, whatever you want to call it. You get uh, black powder-coated bumpers. Uh, and on the inside, you get a leather interior and the 8.4-inch uh, Uconnect system. Right. Uh, so, the, yeah, the interior is a bit more upscale. You also get some badging on, like, the dash. Uh, but for a difference of almost, it's actually almost $10,000 right. difference between the Power Wagon Package Tradesman and the Power Wagon itself, uh, you know, yeah, the mechanical performance differences aren't really there. You get skid plates. You get all, all the same mechanical components. You get the big Hemi. You yeah, get the 6.4. You know, they're, they're all the same components underneath. Now, there's something else to consider. A lot of people like to go and customize a power wagon, which I don't blame you on doing, by the way. I would, definitely. There's a few things I'd do. 
So if you got the tradesman version of that vehicle, you'd be saving a lot of money before you tear the wheels off and replace them or tear the suspension off and replace it or whatever. So that might be another way of looking at it as well. If you're looking for a project, that's something that can also be a daily driver. Um, the bottom line is that the tradesman power wagon package and the power wagon are basically the same truck. No, you cannot get a diesel engine. I know a lot of you guys are curious about Unfortunately. that. Unfortunately. You can't get that option with it. But if you really want a diesel, you can get a 2500 with the diesel, and you can still get it with beefy suspension, beefy shocks, beefy axles, front and rear, beefy tires, and it's pretty close to the capability of a power wagon, but you have the diesel. Now, if you go and do that, you can also get the six-speed manual transmission which as well, really which, cool. at least currently, is offered. Now, very important thing to talk about. A lot of you guys out there are fully aware of the fact that they're updating <laughs> significantly <laughs> the power wagon. They're basically giving it, from what we've seen, uh, the same treatment that they're going to mean to give other heavy-duty trucks in their lineup, which is basically the new uh, 1500 body, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it'll have a new cab, it'll have a new body, pretty much at least new body panels. Yeah. We don't know what's going on with that truck. We have nothing confirmed yet. We do know it's coming out. Very soon. Very soon. Yeah. But we don't know if there are going to be changes with the power plant, the axles, the transmission, the, the main mechanical components of the truck. We don't know for sure yet. However, we will be finding out soon. And there is some good news. You know what the good news is? What's the good news? It's still a power wagon. <laughs> it's a power wagon. Power wagon don't care. They're not going to build a lesser truck. I have to do this really fast. Hit it. Ding. Our friend Trucker Dan sent us $10. Hey, guys. It's been a while Trucker since Dan, I've done yeah. it. Sorry about that. How are y'all doing? I'm, we're doing pretty good. I'd we're say. doing good. It's better than that you're here, my yeah, friend. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your donation. It's always appreciated. Before we move on from this question, I think we have to, we have to ask an important question. Mm. Are you going to spend the extra $10,000 to get the actual power wagon? Which I don't like to say it that way because it's pretty much the same thing. Mm. Or are you going to save the ten grand and spend that money how you want to spend it on cosmetic or performance upgrades? I'll be honest with you. If I had the money, the real money to get a power wagon, I'd get a power wagon. Mm -hmm. Because on top of what the truck is, I want it to be loud and obnoxious and my wife hates it, which means it's a good truck. <laughs> I brought one home, the red one with, with all the badging and everything. Just like that one? Yeah. Pretty much the same as that one. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, she hated it and I loved it. So... Personally speaking, I'd be willing to spend that money just to make life interesting. On the other side of it, though, honestly, you know, if ten, I, I, ten grand, can ten go grand is really a lot. Far. Yeah, I can get you know, really like kids' far. braces or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I mean, obviously, saving money is important. But when you're there, when you're on the dealership lot, and you see exactly what you want in front of you, it's so mm. hard to say no. It is hard. Mm. I th I've I've really struggled with this question uh, myself. I think if it were me, I'd try and find a slightly used power wagon. Instead of the power wagon package, so you still save a little money, uh, but you're not. I, I love the aesthetic that this thing has. It has the the kind of retro graphics. I really actually a lot of people love the crosshair grill. Mm. I prefer this grill. That's going to be a super unpopular opinion, but I just think that looks a lot better than the regular tradesman with the power wagon package. So there you go. You have the right you know, opinion, and you have the wrong opinion well, on right, the truck, yeah. but that's okay. Um, but let's move on. Uh, by the way, uh, let's see here. Yeah, you can buy a lot of mods, uh, David said, tons for 10000 and, and, and that's another thing. I mean, I, I like mods as well, so maybe. And you know what? There are, there are two things. Let me just quickly say this. Yeah, no, we, we can spend some time on this. Um, I'm really hoping that with the new Power Wagon, they've taken care of one of the biggest issues it has, which is the exhaust note. Look, the truck yeah. is already, it, it's got curb presence in the way it's like the Raptor because it has personality, mm -hmm. which is rare for a pickup truck off, you know, coming straight out of the dealership. But if they made that exhaust note a little sweeter, oh, that truck would be so much nicer. Yeah. So one of the things I would do is probably change the exhaust package. And then, frankly speaking, it's a big, heavy truck. It needs wider tires, larger tires. So uh, you yank out the tires and the rims, and I would put on wider, possibly slightly larger wheels and a much beefier tire package and you can do that without having to put a lift on this thing because it's already lifted pretty you know i, I like the, the the height personally yeah. so those are the things i would do and you know what ten thousand dollars suddenly isn't ten thousand dollars when you do that well this is going to sound ridiculous but i've just thought of it off the top of my head what you could do hypothetically this might be a little more difficult and it would cost a lot more money you could buy a tradesman power wagon package and yeah. then also buy a hell crate motor and that's like twenty grand for the motor itself. <laughs> yeah. So then you'd be ten over the cost of a regular power wagon. Plus installing it would probably be another 
10 at least, right? So you pr you'd probably be spending another 20 grand on top of the power wagon, but you'd have 707 horsepower, like what could be coming up in the Ram uh, TRX. <coughs> So he's 22, guys. Yeah, I'm really so I'm getting creative. Got, yeah, he's, I'm sorry. getting creative with this, but that that's a thought. You could do that. It, it's 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 an awesome dream, but for those who live in reality, yeah, it's not going to happen. All right, let's move on to the next question, shall we? Sure. Which is a car question. Yeah, Christopher asks uh, or says, "I'm looking for a used, long-lasting, maintenance-friendly sedan for a family car, a primary commuter for my wife." I'm a diesel nut, and I think diesel engines tend to hold up for many more miles than gas engines before major rebuild or issues arise. I'm looking at getting a 2013 to 2015 Volkswagen Passat, and I was wondering what you may suggest or recommend for me. Uh, and frankly, Christopher, this is kind of a tough question. It is. There's uh, Right now, at least temporarily, there is only one new car you can get in the United States that I know of that has a diesel power plant that's relatively affordable, and that's... The Chevy Cruze, and it's going away. Yeah, <laughs> like really yeah. soon. Yeah, exactly. So, um, as in terms of older cars, older cars, there's a lot out there. There's a few. The Passat actually is a fine choice. Mm -hmm. I think that that would probably if you're really if you're really looking for a diesel, that's one of your better options for a diesel sedan that's been you know so at least somewhat recent. Right, or the Jetta you can the get, Jetta which is basically well. a similar power plant. Um, there's the Mercedes diesels, the Blue Tex, and yeah, the uh, BMW. BMW diesels as well. But you said you're looking for something maintenance friendly, uh, and I, I, I can't recommend the Mercedes or the BMW on that front uh, necessarily. Um, so so it's a hard question. I, I think I kind of want to address the, like the idea that a diesel is inherently more reliable than a gas motor. I think our producer Zach said it best when he said that, well, it's not necessarily that. It's also incumbent on the driver. Right. <laughs> so, because you can drive either vehicle beautifully and take care of it, or you can drive it like crap and, and ruin you know, it. And ruin and it. Especially so, if you're buying something used, you're going to have to worry about who was driving it before you. Now, diesels are known, of course, for getting better mileage and having better range. Uh, and that's absolutely true uh, in most cases. But on the other side of it, it's the reality of, frankly speaking, if you want one of those engines fixed, a used diesel engine, you need a diesel mechanic mm -hmm. in many cases, and that's expensive. So consider that. Now, with that being said, I think uh, the idea of a Passat diesel is an excellent idea. I mean, yeah, plenty of range, good mileage. A lot of room. A lot it's a of great room. family car, actually. Sure, sure. And you can run it on vegetable oil, sort of, kind of. Oh yeah, please. Ding ding. Because Nathan, someone agree with me. Dalen, Dalen, Dalen. I'm not. I, I might have butchered that. Uh, he says a buddy of mine has an 8.1 Chevy 2500 with a supercharger, makes 800 horsepower, okay. uh, and he would do the same thing to that power wagon that I would do. So thank you for agreeing with me because I think that's a really fun idea. You know, it, it, no, it's an awesome idea, and so is buying a crate engine. It's and all horribly that. impractical, but, but it's a fun idea. The bottom line is. People who live on planet Earth who don't make that much money, I, I would rather keep the warranty like for a, SEMA, a few years. A truck, it, yeah, it is like a SEMA truck, yeah. and it, it, it's cool to dream about, but in reality, I'd want something I could drive every day, and yeah. that if it breaks, I could take it to the mechanic at the dealership, and they would fix it for 50 bucks or whatever the deductible is. Right. Having a vehicle that you have you know, a supercharger in, many cases, they are not guaranteed or warranted by the company. So <laughs> Usually, more often than not, they're not warranted. You know who, who used to do that a lot? Toyota. Toyota had some really cool, the TRD uh, yeah, superchargers they that they had. Cool it was pretty cool. Now, speaking of Toyota and speaking of Ram, that goes to our next question. Yeah, to finish with Christopher, oh, yeah. the Passat, I think, is a fine choice, but there's not a whole lot of options for a diesel sedan here in the U.S. that would be relatively maintenance-friendly. Yeah. Uh, um, before you guys move on, there's a couple of comments. Going back to Ram for a second. Yeah, sure. sure. Um, Got to find it again here. Michael Flick said, uh, everyone complains about the new Ram's exhaust note sitting still, but forget that it sounds awesome when driving. I actually, I, I agree, agree with that. Uh, I disagree, I disagree with, with both that. of you. Wrong! I agree with that. No, it, I, um, I think it sounds so much better in a kit, which I've heard before. We drove one literally cross-country, and at the same time, I probably put 50,000 miles on various power wagons over the past seven years. Now, they sound good, but they could sound so much better. Okay, I'm, I'm just, this is my own personal opinion, and, you know, opinions are like elbows. Almost everybody has them. He doesn't. He actually has two on each arm. It's bizarre. Yeah, it's weird. Um, but the point is, is that, yes, sure, it sounds okay, but I think it sounds a lot better, especially there's a Borla exhaust kit that I yeah, heard. That was, uh, the guy came in here and did a, that thing, yeah. uh, Dude, I Love My Ride. It sounded pretty, pretty It nice. sounded intense. Yeah. It was beautiful. So, 
okay, I, you know, you, you have a point, but I don't agree with you. Nonetheless, I get it. Okay. I want to bring up a new problem Please. that I hope they address with, while well, we're still on the subject of Rams. I think my biggest issue with the Power Wagon was it, it has a 6'4", yeah. but it still felt a little slow to me. Oh, stop. I mean, it, uh, do you know how much that thing weighs? It's why I wish the diesel was an option. It weighs, you know what I mean? but like, yeah, I did too. see, that's a whole new bag I, of But worms. it's like, up here, your mile above sea level, I wish it sounded better, but I also wish it was faster. Yeah, there's a little bit more power. I, yeah. I do agree that, yeah. you know, with such a large displacement engine, that there'd be a little bit more power. But it's, it's a, a 2500 series truck. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's and a, I mean, yeah. you get thick axles and yeah, thick everything yeah. on there. It's like a tank. And it, when you're going off-road, you don't need to be going fast. That's interesting. We recently heard yet another excuse, sorry, reason from Ram why they will not put a diesel in there. Which was? And that's because the intercooler is being blocked or would be blocked by the front by the winch. winch. Mm -hmm. Now, prior to that, other uh, excuses, sorry, um, reasons why it wasn't available with a diesel was too heavy. Sure. And too large, physically large. So those are some of the other points that were brought up by Ram in terms well, of why they didn't put it in there. I just want to clarify yeah. that point um, about the intercooler. Was it directly from Ram? It was one from one of our fellow journalists. Oh, it was right. a fellow yeah. journalist? Okay. Uh, so I, I won't blame you, Ram. Uh, I'll blame that journalist. I have a feeling I know who it is. Did he have no <laughs> neck? Did he walk around like this? No, he had a neck. Oh, he had okay. Oh, so it's someone else. Anyway, the point is, is that um, there have been reasons why the vehicle does hasn't had a diesel. It really would be awesome with a diesel, but there could be issues why it would be frankly better with a gas engine. And yes, a gas engine with more power that would be better. True. All right. Let's um. Shall we move on to our next? Yeah. Which this is, one is actually not a question. It's a it's a, a follow up. It's a follow up, but it's an awesome follow up, and it has something to do with Toyota, and it has something to do with Ram. So back in uh, December, this guy Scott uh, told us they, he had a question about buying a manual rim. Speaking of manual rims. Yep. Uh, and so Scott got back to us and told us that uh, he traded in his 07 Tacoma and got a 2018 Ram 2500 Laramie with the G56 manual transmission. And he couldn't be happier, so we wanted to thank us for the advice. Uh, the Tacoma held its value really well, he said, which is not yeah. a surprise, actually. Those trucks hold their value exceptionally They're, they're about well. the best in the book. Uh, and he's hoping this Cummins diesel-equipped rim will do pretty well in that department, too. I don't know. Maybe, right? Uh, well, yeah, the Maybe heavy duty well Tacoma, with diesels but. tend to do fairly well. Yeah. But here's the really cool part. His uh, on-road MPG is actually superior <laughs> than it is with the Toyota. Which it's is awesome. It's incredible. Considering the truck weighs pretty much twice as much as the Tacoma. Uh, so that's he, he awesome. drove from New Hampshire to West Virginia, about 530 miles, uh, to meet the dealer, traded in the Tacoma, and then drove back in the Ram. Uh, and it was a great experience, he says. A lot of torque in six gear anywhere from like 45 miles an hour. It just pulls and pulls and pulls. Uh, yeah, he said it gets better. I mean, the four liter V6 and that Tacoma was kind of a, a gas hog, anyways. So, um, but the, we're Scott. We're really glad to hear that you like your new truck. That is fantastic. Uh, that's why we're here. You know? One of my dream trucks was one that was built by AEV, and they actually had um, basically that setup with a short bed, lifted, big fat tires, and the ability to go off road, seriously go off road with a manual transmission. I'm a huge fan of manual transmissions. And the fact that Ram is the only major truck company in the United States that sells a manual transmission on any of their trucks, basically. Well, any of the ones regular civilians want to buy. I mean, that's pretty impressive. There was a time when Ford and Chevy had them. You can get the Taco with a manual, right? Not the heavy duties, anything, though. Well, not, or any, half not anything that size. Yeah, but or half It's tons. all the midsize, right? It's the Taco and the... The Tacoma you can get, the Colorado and the you Nissan. Can get. Well, the Colorado you can only get with a four-cylinder engine. It's their base right. model. Yeah. After that, no matter what, it has to be an automatic. The Ford, the one we just had... Only a 10-speed. Yeah, and that's only a 10-speed. Um, um, and then It's a, a great engine and transmission, but oh, it's I actually think it's, it's one of the fastest trucks we've driven it's really quick. in its uh, yeah, segment. It's awesome, actually. And then you have uh, the Nissan, <laughs> Nissan Frontier, which, yes, it has a six-speed manual transmission option. I mean, it dates back 15 it's years, as roughly. as old as the truck is. <laughs> it's really old. <laughs> but yeah, actually, when you shift it, you can hear, like, you know, rust falling off. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, re it's a really old transmission, though, and... So, yeah, um, the American trucks, not so much, but, um, yeah, with uh, both Nissan and Toyota, you can get manual transmissions. Yeah. But those are mid-sized trucks. In terms of full-size trucks, nada. Not much. And then with the heavy-duty trucks, Even just one. So I'm really happy for Scott. Congratulations on your truck. I'm really glad you're happy with it. 
please drop us a note from time to time and yeah. give us updates. Yeah, thanks for keeping us posted, Scott. It's really yeah. fun to see you guys with your new rides that, is damn uh, cool. that we helped you find. So, uh, all right, let's move on to Ron, who is asking about SUVs. He says, I'm going to buy something in September, uh, probably a midsize SUV. The Honda Pilot is my first choice. It's reliable and has solid resale value, but I've considered several others as well. I like the Mazda CX-5 for its equipment and interior, but it seems to have a long front end, at least in videos. I think the Toyota RAV4 is low on power, but it's reliable and has good resale value. Uh, I'm not really a Ford guy either, and the Chevy Blazer is a possibility, but I'm thinking it may be priced too high. Mm. I like the Hyundai Tucson, but it doesn't have quite enough power and the rear visibility isn't great. Do you have any other suggestions for a mid-size SUV? Well, there is something to keep in mind. You do have the Honda Passport that's coming out soon. Mm, indeed which will have the same power plant as the Pilot, but it's a little bit smaller. It's a slightly smaller wheelbase. And it's, and a, it's a little higher off the ground. It's right? a little bit more off-roady. Cool. Yeah. So you get you kind of get the best of both worlds. So I haven't driven it yet. None of us have. So, uh, but the drive event is next month, isn't it? I believe so. So uh, the, we'll, we'll have impressions soon. I, I have a feeling it's going to drive a lot like a Pilot does, which isn't a little such a bad... quicker and more fun, maybe. Right. It, it should, be, it should yeah. be. It should yeah. be quicker, but, you know, we don't know for sure. Now, I, I have driven the RAV4, the new one. By the way, I'm a, I am love the RAV4, uh, especially their adventure version. Mm -hmm. I think it's just an excellent package. It looks cool. It's got a lot of great tech features. Power is good, too. It's got over 200 horsepower. So, um, And then you could always get the hybrid, which even has more high, uh, horsepower to it and gets the mileage. Uh, do we have, oh, we got a little dingy. Uh, Fendi? Fendi 88. Fendi 88. Keep up the good work, guys. Long time follower. Met Andre shoe shopping a few weeks ago. That's funny. <laughs> Is he wearing socks? Because we don't know for good sure if question. he's wearing socks Sometimes or shoe shops. Sometimes can't tell. Uh, was out in Moab wheeling with my girls, uh, with my girls JL before Christmas, and some chick comes up to pet her dogs, and it was Emmy Hall. Oh, Emmy good. is the best. That's amazing. That's if so cool. you have an animal, especially a dog, a cute one, oh. and you're near a vehicle, Emmy Hall will come running up. It doesn't matter if it's savage. She'll just like, I love it, and yeah. start pet playing with it. Emmy's right. awesome. She's our sister from another mister. I'm so glad you got to meet part of the team. You didn't meet the cool half of the team, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's um, this is the cool half. But, uh, and I'm really glad that you got out of that shoe store without Andre you know, carving his uh, initials in your forehead or something because he can be grumpy with shoe shopping something about bread lines in russia and shoe shopping it doesn't yeah, it quite just, it, it brings back bad memories bad memories for him but uh anyway that's great to hear we're, go, we're glad you got, <laughs> glad you got a chance to and thank them. you for the donation we appreciate well. it really thank appreciate you very much it. um okay so back to ron uh you know he said the, the pilot's his first choice mm -hmm. is, currently uh i think the pilot is a great option but I, I haven't had a chance to be in that new rav4 yet and that that seems to me like another really good choice. I really like the RAV4. The power's good. The packaging's good. It's altogether so much better than the vehicle it replaces, and it's still fairly efficient and fairly affordable. Now, I've also driven the CX-5 Turbo. Right. Yes, the front end does have a little bit of an overhang. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you're flying up a curb, you could bottom out, uh, although it's not as it's not that low bad. as some cars. Uh, our producer angrily points out the fact that they actually lowered the vehicle from his... I'm sorry, what year was yours? I have a 2016. 16. And how high is it off the ground? It's 8.5 inches. It's 8.5 inches of ground clearance. This one on the screen has 7.6. So, uh, and it, you managed not to inch. throw anything at the screen, which is really good. Which is amazing. Way to go, Zach. The, the <laughs> thing is, yeah, the ground clearance is lower. I mean, there is a good reason for that. You know, you lower a car closer to the ground, you get better fuel economy, better less performance altogether, like drag, better handling. The looks will grow on you. Like, it took a while for me to come around to the new CX-5, and the turbocharged power is excellent. Oh, what you say. Answer <laughs> the CX-5 owner's prayers. If you're looking for something that's powerful, out of the ones we've been talking <coughs> about so far, I think the CX-5 Turbo is probably your best bet on power. Excellent balance. Yeah. Really, really good handling vehicle. But you're right, it is a little bit lower, so. And it now has, this now has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, finally. Mm -hmm. Which it should have had for a while, but it, but it does have it now, which I think bumps it up even further in my book. It took a long time for them to negotiate that contract. I gotta tell you. Yeah, no kidding. So um, um, those are, and I, you know, Ford unfortunately doesn't have anything new right now that that's even worth really spotlighting. Yeah. Uh, we haven't driven the Blazer yet, so we nope. don't know. I, I would throw out the Tiguan. Uh, personally, I'm kind of a fan of the Tiguan in this segment. Uh, if you don't like Volkswagens, that's fine. But I think it's. 
pretty stylish, pretty comfortable, good tech once again. Uh, it's nice to drive. The little two liter turbo is a good engine. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're right. You know, I, that should I be would, on this list. I would always throw out the Atlas in this category, or the Tiguan in this category, just because I think it's a good car. Um, but yeah, you know, I think the, with the Pilot, the CX-5, or waiting for the Passport, I was going to say that too. Uh, see what the Passport has to offer, because I think that could be a really cool package as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree 100%. So there are some options. I, nothing personal to Nissan. I wouldn't recommend the Rogue or the Rogue Sport. Me I don't neither. think yeah. um, those have the power that you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're comfy vehicles and everything, but they're just not very fast. Uh, yeah, this and it has a CVT, and uh, we, you know, yeah, I think I think the ones actually that you listed uh, were were some of my favorite choices in that segment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I would recommend to to go poke around with. I, the uh, Hyundai and Kia actually right now have been really impressing me as brands, mm -hmm. and their warranty speaks for itself. 10 years, 100,000 miles is really, uh, really excellent. Uh, and if you like one of those, th that's a really good option as yeah, well. Yeah, but he mentioned that he didn't feel like the Hyundai Tucson had enough, fast enough. Uh, enough power. And, and you're not going to solve that by going to the Kia version either. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you know, I think the CX-5 Turbo, uh, the Passport, the Pilot, or the Tiguan would be my... Or RAV4. Or RAV4. The new RAV4. New RAV4. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, so those are a few things up there. Um, Ron, I hope we helped, and uh, let us know what you uh, decide to buy. Yeah, keep us posted, It'd be please. great. Let's, uh, let's talk about uh, some of these questions we got up here. Yeah, dude, Zach, do you have anything? You got anything the chat? I do, yeah. Please. David Fletcher is saying, looking to save up about $10,000 to go toward a truck in the next few years, would like a four-wheel drive, four-door out of the current model trucks, which would you go for on value and reliability to get through snow and is uh, says West Virginia. So. Okay, um, was that half ton or, or full size? Did he say? Just uh, a truck. Just a truck. Just a four door truck. Four wheel four drive. Four, so four door. throw out a mid size and a half ton. Okay. Heavy duty option. Well, first of all, I mean it's still a guess, but eventually, I don't know, maybe by twenty forty. Toyota will eventually have a new Tundra. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping earlier. We all yeah. are. Now, once that happens, the value of the current Tundra will drop a little bit. And when that happens, look, everybody I've spoken to who's owned a Tundra has said the same damn thing. It is a reliable, rock-solid truck. Yeah. And they tend to be, if you get the TRD package, and if you can get the older TRD package with the locking rear diff, then you've got something that might be pretty good in snow, but snow tires, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Mid-sized trucks, that's a different story. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Tacoma. We found that a lot of people have had some very good luck with uh, Nissan Frontiers. They're yeah. much less expensive. Frontiers are great, actually. Yeah, yeah. they really are. And uh, since they've, they've gone through a few recalls, and they've been building the truck forever, so that's another one that needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. But they've, it's been around for so long, they've really worked all the kinks out of you it. You won't have a hard time finding parts, either. No, you really won't. Yeah. Uh, so those are two really good trucks. Now, if you're looking for something that has a good all-wheel drive system, not a four-wheel drive system, but all-wheel drive and gives you a more car-like performance, Ridge you might want, exactly, yeah, the, the Honda Ridgeline. Yeah. Look, I know it's not really a truck. It's more of a crossover truck thing. But if you're not loading a ton of stuff in there and if you need something that gets along in snow very well, I highly recommend them. They are fantastic in snow. And that's just with regular mud and snow tires that I was driving when I tested one. So... That's another possibility as well. And all of these trucks, hopefully in 10 years, will drop in value quite a bit. Hopefully. I, I think uh, if you're going the Toyota route, which for reliability, uh, Toyota probably has the best reputation of, yeah. of all the trucks right now. But they also require the most money for the trucks because True. the resale value. Uh, the Tacoma, though, is worse slash better. At, it's better at holding its value, I think, than the Tundra. Uh, yeah. Marginally, they're, no, no, they're, it is. they're both pretty good uh, at keeping their value. But but I guess if you're going for something used, you'd probably have an easier time getting a good deal on a Tundra than getting a good deal on a Tacoma. That's kind of where I, my head is yeah. on that too. Uh, so. so I'd say maybe keep your eyes peeled for one of those. Cause, and we just had a TRD Pro Tundra. Uh, that engine sounds amazing with the TRD exhaust. Yeah. Uh, and we also well we'll have a video coming out pretty soon comparing it to the uh, Frontier or the the. Um, the Titan Pro 4X. Which reminds me, the Titan Pro 4X that, that we had... That could be a good option, too, actually. That thing was... First, when we had it, we had it for over six months. It was completely bulletproof. There were yeah, no problems with awesome. it. And we beat the crap out of it, and it did great. Speaking so, of snowy, yeah. snow driving, too, I actually took the Titan up to uh, Buena Vista, which is a town up in the mountains in Colorado. My aunt lives there, uh, and it blizzarded while I was there with the truck. So I got a chance to drive that around in the snow for a good while. Uh, and it was... 
unstoppable. I mean, I, I really tried to put it through its paces, and I, I actively tried to get it stuck, and I had a, an exceptionally hard time doing that. Uh, and I suspect you could find one of those in a few years. for. Yeah, I would imagine cheap. so. Um, and the other thing is, if you get the uh, Pro 4X, then you're getting the locking rear diff, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, manual locking rear diff, which is awesome. Sorry, a bunch electric. of skid plates, a lift. Yeah, all sorts but, of but in terms of driving through snow, that's really where we're that's, going with yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. That's another really good possibility in the future. The only reason I haven't mentioned any American trucks isn't because any of them are particularly bad. Diesels do really well in cold climates once mm -hmm. you get them warmed up. Yep. And all of those trucks do great, but at the same time, I personally feel that the trucks that we've mentioned are the ones that, at least right now, have a pretty good pedigree for being strong and resilient and hopefully uh, affordable within the next few years. So yeah. that's the reason why we mentioned them. Exactly. Any more questions? Um, just a comment. Well, there are also questions, you know, people asking about various cars and trucks. News on the Bronco? No. Not much. News on... 2020 expedition uh, it was just refreshed so probably, probably not going to happen much. anytime soon yeah gmc sierra um will likely see something on it soon we have the drive coming up for the new silverado right so we know the sierra heavy duty will follow mm. um 2019 renegade coming soon yeah and that that will have a new uh, power plant yeah, one point yeah. three liter turbo. Yeah, which they're getting rid of. Cool, actually. Yeah, but they lose the manual transmission option. Bummer. Which is a bummer. Um, is. Should we go to our last uh, pre-selected question? Yes, please. Okay, so uh, Rodney, uh, this is a car question. He says, "My wife and I are looking to trade our twenty fourteen Dodge Grand Caravan. It's been a fairly trouble fueled van, uh, but they would like more towing capacity. So they're looking at a twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen Dodge Durango. Mm -hmm. uh, but the vehicles that they're finding." on dealership lots, I assume, uh, are, all have the Pentastar V6, whereas most of the reviews they found online have been either the RT or the SRT, which, of course, do not have the Pentastar V6. Uh, any advice? First of all, the reason why you're seeing all those reviews is because those two engines are absolute hoots to drive. Yeah, exactly. The SRT is, you know, the closest thing you get to a Porsche with three rows. It's mm -hmm. just a monster. And, you know, even the RT, uh, all the VA-powered uh, Durango's are a lot of fun to drive and they have Super really fun. good power. Yeah. But you're asking about the Pentastar V6. Now, first of all, the Pentastar V6 is a great engine. It's yeah. proven itself to be reliable, it's relatively efficient, it has good power, it's a solid, solid powertrain. Yeah. So when you add that to the Durango, you're able to get over, it's over 6,000 pounds of towing, right? It's 6,200. 6,200 pounds of towing. Now, obviously, you need to get the towing package with that. But the bottom line is I have towed with the V6 before, and it did fine. I think I was towing 5,000 pounds, and that was adjusted for the amount of people in the vehicle and everything else, which was, well, frankly, too. Sure. The bottom line is it did just fine. And it's not, even though it looks like it's an SUV, it's really not. It, it's more of a crossover because it doesn't have a frame. Yeah, it's not body on frame. It's, no. It's independent. But nonetheless, um, it towed very well, and you didn't really feel a lot of shocking, in other words, uh, jolts coming from underneath the vehicle. It felt very solid. Now, I am going to stretch this a little bit uh, because go. I feel the need to do that. Uh, so you're saying that you're looking for more capability towing, right? And, yeah, the, the Pentastar V6 is going to do a fine job towing, uh, and, and that is a, totally a great engine. But I would encourage you guys to, to go look at the RT and the SRT for one crucial reason. With the SRT, because that's actually the way you get the best tow rating out of the Durango. When you get the SRT package, which... Cost sixty three thousand. It starts at sixty three thousand dollars. So that's a lot of money, and I understand that yeah, might be completely out of the budget. Um, that being said, when you do that, you can tow eighty seven hundred pounds, which is class leading for its segment, uh, and that's a lot of weight. And it tow it tows really well. Yeah. Um, we've done the night gauntlet with the Durango SRT, uh, and it towed beautifully. Um, so uh, you know, if you have the budget for it, I would totally encourage you to get the SRT. Also, because uh, it's amazing and badass, and it might be one of my favorite SUVs ever. Um, no doubt that it, it deserves all those accolades. However, yeah. not a lot of people who are looking at a... They're coming from a minivan. I know, yeah. yeah. Okay, so going yeah. from a minivan to a hot rod, <laughs> which is basically what you're suggesting, <laughs> Yes. it yeah. might be a little much to swallow. Well, not this to is like the, the hot rod of minivan. It's twice the price of it's a, a regular Durango. Yeah, it's not pretty Not to expensive. mention the fuel economy. Oh, the yeah, fuel economy. The four, look, the 475 horsepower is great. Yeah. Okay, it's a lot of fun, particularly with that exhaust note. It's awesome. It's it is awesome. It's the best. When we had one uh, not so long ago, uh -huh. 
I struggled to get past 12 miles of the gallon. Right. But I got eight. I got eight when I was driving. Yeah, if you really put your foot into it. You, if you're Nathan, you, you get eight. Um, yeah, no, it gets horrible gas mileage. It's quite expensive. Yeah. Uh, but it's also the the best way to get the best tow rating out of the Durango, and it's super fun. So if, if you if you could possibly, or even the RT, actually. Or actually, Zach made a good suggestion earlier and said go for the GT trim yep. of the Durango because you get the Pentastar, but you get the looks of the SRT and the RT. Do you think you the they've grill. driven a minivan? Do you think they care about looks? Uh, I mean, maybe not. I don't no, know. Maybe, but they, if they do care, then the, uh, the GT is an option. Guys, if you're in the market for something like a Durango, uh, gets decent mileage and can tow fairly well the Durango well, is a good choice. Get for and then, <coughs> pardon me, there are other choices. Uh, specifically, the new Ford um, Explorer that's coming out soon. Mm. That, I have a feeling, is going to be an excellent tow vehicle. Ford does not screw around with towing. So, True. these are some other vehicles that you can look into that may not require you to get a second on your house in order to buy it, Junior. Well, listen, yeah. Uh, Budget-wise, the SRT is pretty much a horrible choice, um, but I think it's really fun, and I still get, encourage get a Durango it. SRT. Says the guy who drives a Volkswagen GTI. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. He he got you. He we got should you. probably sign off. I think it's time. time. I think. It's, are there any other questions? I uh, just to a cover? comment from okay. Smith Jones. He says we need to see a face-off between the new cheap Jeep. Uh, TJ that Roman and Tommy just bought. If you don't know about that, go look at that over on TFL Cars. They just released a video. And yeah. the Suzuki Samurai. Suzuki wins. My prediction, as long as I'm driving. But it no is problem. Wins on, it is on what basis? What does it win at? Everything. How? It's better looking. Sure. Oh, I'll yeah. give you that. Yep. That's okay. True. Yeah. It has better proportions. That's looks... Better breakover angle, better approach angle, better departure angle. Okay. Is more awesome. That's just, we know that, because it doesn't have a three-speed automatic transmission. Yeah, it also or, has 60 horsepower, Nathan. Well, less than that when you have It had here. 60 horsepower. You know what, though? In terms of power-to-weight ratio, I bet you they're really closely matched. And the yeah, Suzuki has a five-speed manual transmission, That's true. which the is Jeep what men like, as automatic. opposed to a three-speed automatic transmission, which is the second time that those boys have gone out and bought a Jeep with a three-speed automatic transmission. Second time. David is heated about the automatic. Two mistakes. Um, um, Tommy and Roman, bad on you. <laughs> I, I, see, I don't know what I would take between the two. Because I love the Suzuki, but it's really slow, it's really bumpy, and it may or may not be an actual death trap. And then you don't need to ride in it. Nathan will drive, um, and I will beat them. Okay, they might, might beat me in a drag race. Maybe. Definitely. There's a lot more tired. With, with certainty, they would beat you in. That's, oh, that I don't think a, it's that. It's quite that so simple. Given. You get that little thing. It's a four-cylinder. It's anemic. And when you get it up here, it, yeah. I'm telling you that you it would be... You have a four-cylinder that's also anemic. Yes, but I have a lighter vehicle. Even with me in it, lighter. What? Lighter. Uh, All right. So this could go note. up. <laughs> on that <laughs> note. Uh, thank should you guys so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussion going on with our cheap 4x4 challenge. And who knows what's going to be coming next. Who so. Knows? I'm, I'm seriously. Roman knows. He doesn't tell us what he's <laughs> oh, he going doesn't. Buy. I get a phone call at night. You know, oh, by the way, we bought this. Click. <laughs> so, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, uh, we're here Mondays and Fridays, usually. And usually, and Andre would be sitting here. So. Usually, Andre. And then talking truck trucks with uh, Andre and Kent as well. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys. Cheers. Play us out. See, this is, he's only like hitting a couple strings. I think this is literally one dude with a guitar. Well, maybe it could be that part of it.